Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Welcome to Drinking Bros Podcast, kids. Uh, one of our favorite podcasts is uh, Flagrant 2. Hey, thank with, you, With uh, Schultz and Akash, and here we go. Akash is in the studio Wait, today. Is, that, how, is, is, that it, is it Akash or Akash? Akash. Akash, Akash. Akash yeah. Uh, I knew, I, look, look, I fuck up everybody's name on this show. Yeah. yeah. Every single time, so there was no prayer of me getting that right yeah it was, it was closer than i thought but i grew up in texas so it was always a kosh and i just didn't correct anybody because i was like nervous as a kid or whatever <laughs> and i also don't care unless you're indian and you pronounce it incorrectly and then i'll be like you know better yeah you know better. i don't but if you don't know you don't know i'm gonna be mad at you mm -hmm. and i don't want to be like all like this is how you say it i don't give a fuck how you say it i want my people to say my name correctly yeah yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. people that would know right yeah and they like if they soften like uh, it's akash with like a really strong k but if they're like akash i'm like this is embarrassing for you you need to fix that shit. yeah stop doing that but i didn't even notice until you asked because you're a white okay good well yeah. i'm a white yeah, yeah and that's guys, what that's uh, what happens just like, try your best that's yeah yeah, <laughs> that's all we do. And I'll get those. Somebody will give me a participation trophy after this. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. I'm a white, and that's what happens. Hey, dude. Um, <laughs> Y'all need some credit as white dudes. It's, it's uh, a little bit. It, dude, it's getting hard. I mean, hot, look, Hollywood, we've got, we've got a ton of friends in Hollywood who are like, yo, dude, I can't get a fucking job as a white now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, for real? Yeah. Like, I mean, big stars. Start a podcast. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Fun. Yeah. The only thing that bothers me about it, not the only thing, the thing that bothers me, I want people to just be consistent. That's my big thing. I think I'm a pretty moderate dude, be consistent. And I would hear my, my friends of color complaining about how they didn't get any opportunities. And now they're getting kind of like, like disproportionate opportunities if you're like Indian and you're 1% of the population and you're yeah. getting all these roles. But instead of being like, yo, that's fucked up, all we said all along was, which is what they said, we just want the best person to get the role. Now they're looking at white dudes like, oh, I'm sorry, is it hard for you now? And it's like, yo, you just become the white man. Yes. Yeah. Like yeah. whatever white man you hated, you became that guy. Yeah. So just because I want the best person to get the role. The that's person it. you think is the best, just give it to them, that's it. In all forms of life, whatever job you're doing. Meritocracy. I, I don't give a fuck about race. As close as we can get to a meritocracy, let's do that. Performance. Yes. Just performance. I 100%. don't give a shit what yes. race you are. I don't care who you're fucking. Uh, my wife always says the same thing on our other show. She's like, dude. There's a staggering amount of whiteness in here, though. I got oh, yeah. Well, well no. We, we got a, we got a, these we got a Mexican. These two are halvesies. Oh, yeah. you're halves. Yeah, yeah, we got a couple Mexicans. So uh, combined, we have one full Mexican. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I would I would say one and three quarter Mexican all the way around. Yeah, well, you have to cut them in half and count the rings to get the exact amount. And then two people who look like they were at the insurrection. Like I think that's the yeah. right yeah. amount. Yeah. And then like a yeah, one hundred percent. You got a, a fraternity balance. guy. You yeah, know, you so balance. you feel like this is a safe space. There, okay. There's enough color in here it. where you're like, all right. Well, great. luckily we're beyond September through like November of two thousand one, where white people in America couldn't tell the difference between Saudi Arabians and Indians, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 That was, that was that was interesting time. time. Yeah, it was an interesting time. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> like, I'm sure even on 9 11, you're scared to travel where you're Dude, like, man. I weirdly, like, I watched a documentary on Al Qaeda and world geography like three mm -hmm. years before. And so when 9 11 happened, I was sitting in class and we're all fucking horrified and everything. And then it clicked with me. I was like, oh shit, it was probably that bin Laden guy. I remember watching the documentary. He yeah. bombed the World Trade Center before. Yeah. Nobody else had really. Thought I, th from what I had known, even the media hadn't gotten there quite yet. They were close, mm -hmm. but I, in that moment, I was like, "Oh fuck, this is about to get bad for me." Because <laughs> I, mean, I grew up in Frisco. Are you guys Texans? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, a yeah. suburb of Dallas. Now it's like a bustling suburb. Beautiful, yeah. And the, and the prices there are as high as Austin right now. It's where the star it's is. Crazy, man. Yeah, yeah. It's where the stars. Mm -hmm. I went there before all that shit was built, and I was like on the very front end of everybody moving in. So it was still like there was a Future Farmers Association, and like. I, there was one other Indian kid in my school, and he's Pakistani. He was close enough. Yeah. And so I was just like, they're not going to fucking know the difference, dude. This is going to be rough. Yeah. And it wasn't awful, but you definitely got, you know, you definitely got your shit. It wasn't like I was scared for my safety, but you definitely got, you know, some, you know, your little bullying shit here and there. Yeah, yeah. A lot of 9-11 shit yeah, where it's yeah. just like, hey, dude, what's in the backpack? Right. I, especially kind of as a kid. Two kids walked me down the hallway, and they were like, we got them. With the <laughs> Actually, it was two Mexicans, to be honest, and I was impressed that they figured it out before anybody. I had thought about it, and then at lunch, like an hour later, <laughs> these two Mexican dudes were like, we got them, don't worry. And I was like, yeah, how the fuck do y'all know? CNN don't even know yet. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the bit, though. <laughs> yeah. Like, and they were, they were ahead of they the bit, which is in, nice. Dude. Yeah. They knew. 
I remember uh, I went to, I told this story before, but I, I was in Los Angeles and uh, went to go see the Fast and Furious movie right. opening nights. Yeah. And uh, it was at the, the new Universal City, their, their beautiful theater right. and everything else. Uh, took a date. Um, I walked in and I sat down. There was a black couple next to me and I, I, we sat down next to them. Yeah. The entire theater was Latino. Latino. And I yeah. looked at the black dude and I go, oh, shit. That's what it feels like, huh? <laughs> and he goes, yeah, it does. You're welcome. And he goes, weird, right? And he goes, they could turn on us in any second. <laughs> and I go, fuck. And he goes, uh, that's the way we think about you, too. You know? And I was like, I bet. Shit. It's an eye-opening moment, right? It was, but nothing happened. Uh, and then, you know, I realized Vin Diesel actually really does bring everybody together Yo, and make them feel the like guy, family. Dude. That's the new president, I think. Vin Diesel. Fuck, dude. I'm better than The Rock, for sure. Like the, uh, rock, the rock, the rock's yeah. gonna try to get involved in our day to day life. Like, oh, you guys should be eating right and working. I'm like, no, I'm gonna keep doing drugs and drinking. The rock, all right? yeah, yeah, mind your fucking business. You already in shape though. You look great, buddy. I, yeah. I haven't worked out since November of 2018. Well, if something's going on, you got he's steroids. dialed. Yeah, he's so steroids. he's dialed. Yeah, 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 yeah. I want to try that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he he's dialed into all the all the steroids, I take like TRT every drug. And, and a drug called Sermorlin, which just makes your body produce natural HGH. That's it. Oh, fuck. that's all I take. Can I do that? Yeah, it's yeah. Cheap, relatively cheap, too. Yeah, it, it yeah. is. It's actually really fucking cheap. Yeah. Um, I just started because of him, and I was just like, all right, cool, How's man. How's it working for you? Just started. Okay. So I'm only, I'm only a couple weeks into this tomorrow, and we'll see. I'm I've got to chart your progress, and I'm going to see what's going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'll text you daily. Yeah, um, please you do. Know? I wish somebody gave me some growth hormone when I was 14. <laughs> fucking 5'7 yeah. over here. Yeah. What's going on? Is, is, it, is it a true 5'7, though? It's is a true 5'7. Five, five, I, I, I got caught lying about my height in college, and I was like, well, I can't do that ever again. That was embarrassing. So it's only, <laughs> like, people that are 5'10". And then people that are like five five that lie about their height. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah. Five seven is like you're still short, but it's not unacceptably short. No, you're barely right. below average. Five at six like, is a weirdly a lot. There's a big difference between five six and five seven. You know what's weird though? I will say this: like because Schultz is your 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 dude yeah. on your show. Like uh, we're probably around the same height. Six I would two. imagine. Yeah, I'm six yeah. three. I'm close to six four. Right. Um, when you're shooting a Hollywood movie, yeah, did that. you look, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's like, it's, I'm, I might be a little tough. Who knows? Right. Um, that's just God though, blessing me every single day. And I, I know, can't, man. whoever you believe you. in, uh, through Christ, you. anything is possible. Well, <laughs> uh, <laughs> quite a few, you've got a, quite a few more options than just Jesus though, in your culture. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah, you dude. do. Like, yeah. I mean, you that's, do. That's we the, believe in Jesus too. It's all it's, valid. It's like the, buff, yeah. it's like the buffet of religions. You know what yeah. I mean? You show up, you don't know what you want that day. But it's actually a good analog for humanity, and like you don't know what you're going to need that day either. Maybe this whole God thing is just a maybe mirror. You never know. Need. Yeah, maybe our, our, uh, somebody explained it to me like whatever ta whatever gets you to the top of the mountain, whatever God it is, as long as you get there, great. Yeah. Whoever it is, I, great. I don't give a shit either. Yeah, believe in whatever the fuck you want to believe in. Like I don't, I don't really care. Yeah. If there was, like, it, but if Jesus I had Caitlyn height, Jenner's so. dick, yeah, in, in a in a. Not like a mayonnaise jar, but like a pickle jar. Right. Just with some formaldehyde around right. it and everything else. I'd right. pray to that. Like, I, I believe. <laughs> I, I just watched that doc, dude, with uh, the Bruce Jenner one. I couldn't. I, there's nothing I want to watch less than mm, anything Kardashian related. So here's the thing. It was all about his decathlon in the 70s. Oh, fire. So I was like, oh, shit, dude. Let's so go. You know, the dick I didn't has, know how great he was. The, yes. dick, the dick clearly has magical properties. So with dick, uh, you know, Olympian. Yep. Oh, gold yeah. medalist yep. oh, and yeah. and fucked into the Kardashian family, which yes. you know was kind of annoying, but made him a lot of money. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then post dick removal, failed governor run. Yeah. So it's like the the results are in, folks. That yeah. dick is magic. And when you watch this doc, because he's looking back at his life as Caitlyn now, and he's yeah. talking in this fake voice and everything else. Because I don't know if that's part of a bit too, right. where it was just like my wife saw him ran into him at a, a Starbucks in Malibu. Mm. She was like, I was surprised. He, he actually looked like really feminine and nice, like really? really great hair. And I was like, well, I mean, he's fucking rich. Well, I'm like, sure the yeah, hormones yeah, have yeah, something yeah. to do with the voice thing, but that the voice change is weird to me because if somebody's a closeted gay person, yeah. you, there's no mystery. You know that that person's gay just by the... David Cross did a really good bit on this on, uh, what was it, uh, if baseball had AIDS or something like that, mm -hmm. a comedy album. Yeah, uh, he was like, not all gay people talk like that, but only gay people talk like that. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. You gotta switch it with up the, yeah. with the gay voice. That person is definitely gay. They just don't know it or whatever the fuck, right? Yeah. yeah. But you can't. I don't know how it works with uh, uh, gender dysphoria. Is it the same? Does your voice, like, is that part of it? I don't know. I don't either, man. I mean, the like, because I, I had a bunch of gay buddies in uh, in L.A. and the ones that were like the gayest, who were just yeah. like, man, I fuck dudes yeah. were like dudes like this yeah, and I was yeah. just and it made you jealous where you were like shit 
Like, what'd you do today? Man, we went to the, like, me and my boyfriend went to the gym. We came home fucked. Um, <laughs> Played video games. Yeah, yeah. We, and then I was like, and I was like, all right, got cool. Got my dick sucked playing 2K. That's yeah. what, he said. It's, it's what he said. And then he was like, dude, we went to the movies. I uh, got my dick sucked in the movie theater. And then we played video games. And I was like, shit, It's got to be the easiest relationship. The easiest. It's just pure logic all the time. I know. I, know. I sucked your dick last night. You suck my dick tonight. It's yes. just even Steven. Yeah. The that's one that it. the lesbian one, that's gonna be the hardest one. No, because then yeah, you're bitching over everything, dude. Yeah. <laughs> my, and your periods sync up and shit. Oh god. Yeah. You move in together within two weeks of the relationship starting. <laughs> that's called U Haul Lesbians. It's a thing. Look it up. It assholes. is. That's true. That's he's being <laughs> a comedian friend of mine, Case Rosso, has a joke that I've been telling him to do, but he's scared to. He just said to me one time, he said, uh, you know, the, the statistics of like um, domestic abuse amongst gay male couples is like almost non-existent. Mm. And then amongst lesbian couples, it's like staggeringly high. And then he goes, kind of makes you wonder whose fault it is, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shit, yeah. Because I mean, look. As That's we're a really good joke. He at, should do it at Lilith Fair. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah, it'd be great. Break that one out at the right moment. It'd be yeah. great. Because I mean, look, it, you're, it's in the news now with this Gabby Petito yeah. shit. Yeah, yeah, like. Yeah. Um, people are going back and forth of this uh, body cam footage of like, you know, uh, did he hit her? Was she punching him? Oh, All right, that other right, shit. Right, and you're yeah. just like, who fucking knows, dude? You yeah. put two crazies in a fucking van together and see yeah, what happens. This dude's some kind of like fucking sovereign citizen survivalist guy or some shit. So he's still out there. Well, he's probably in a swamp in Florida up to his neck. But you know that's I mean? still a talent. It like, is impressive. Dying, yeah. can't dying, act like it's not impressive. Dying in a swamp is not talent. But he's still but alive. He, he's been on like, how do you know? Wow. There was some footage. There was some footage, there's, yeah. There's and a it, from a deer stand. There's footage of goddamn Bigfoot, dude. Come on. Hey. Have you seen footage that's actually convincing you that it's him specifically? All right, so let me bring up this. Because uh, this is this was what I said the other day. I'm just now, I'm not fully, I know a little bit about this story. But so, okay, but you know, you know what they look like, yeah. right? Okay. Yeah. I think when you go bald at 22 years old, you lose your fucking mind and you're like, oh shit. And then you start to look. Because I looked at the early pictures when they first started dating together, full head of hair, everything was fine. They looked the same age. He lost all of his fucking oh, she hair. Did that probably. That's and probably her fault. It could be. <laughs> you go bald at 22, that's not somebody else's fault. That's too much stress. Well, male, yeah. pattern, male pattern baldness is because of too much testosterone. <laughs> Technically. But I, so I actually asked a barber because I was thinning uh -huh. up here. And then I took keeps and now it's less thin. And then I said, I'd also, I was really fucking struggling in quarantine. I was like, could it have been stress? He goes, that's the main reasons, stress yeah, or yeah. medication yeah. or genetics. And yeah. if it's yeah. genetics, you're fucked. But yeah, oh, cortisol. Yeah, like stress. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. that bitch, cortisol in his ass out. Not, it, who knows? <laughs> Not call her a bitch, my bad. I know, exactly. The, Sorry. The body's still warm. The, royal, the body's still the, the warm. The royal bitch. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> the royal bitch. <laughs> the bitch in all of us. Yeah. But by the time this airs on Sunday night, they could have, they, they might have him. So look, we're recording this on a Friday. If they caught him, obviously, then, yeah. you know. I mean, he definitely killed her. He fucking killed oh, yeah. her. Oh, sure, right? yeah. Yes. It seems very unlikely that that is not the case. Yeah. 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 Every, I mean, he's, he's a little crazy, it seems, from his social media posts and shit, but any relatively rational person would know, don't run. Yeah. Yeah. If you're, yeah. If you're innocent, I mean, like if she fell out the side of a fucking mountain and he's just like, fuck, I got to get out of here. Yeah. And panicked, you could still probably get out of that. Like there's going to be. And at a certain point, you'll come to your senses. You'll be like, yo, I can't do this. Like yeah, this yeah, girl's yeah. dead. You would think so, right? Yeah. If you're I sane. Mean, if, if, if you're if, not a killer. If, if nothing yeah. actually happened, but if you like. I don't. I haven't seen what they've done to this woman's body yet. Are there, are there defensive wounds? Does she have his skin? Yes. Yeah, so they. So shit? they did classify it as a homicide. Um, he is the suspect. There is a manhunt on, like, going yeah. for him right now. That right. means. And they, they said that the parents uh, gave. They think they aided and abetted and, and gave him like a, a three day head start of like, hey, here's your shit. Get the fuck out of here and just go. Which mm. I had this conversation and, and and it's dark. But if one of my kids. I got yeah. two boys right now. Yeah. If one of them had killed somebody, I'd probably be like, look, I don't know what the fuck happened. Here, go. Just go. I, we can never I don't speak have again, kids, but, but I you got to go. If I had a son, I'd turn that motherfucker in fuck for a yeah. bounty. Really? And if I had a daughter, I'd be like, yo, we'll protect you at all costs. <laughs> I really think that's how I would do it. Because I noticed my little brother is like cousins and like female cousins. I'm so much tougher with the dudes. Mm. Like, yeah. you don't, there's no excuses. Shut the fuck up. I don't want to hear it. And with any of the girls, I'm like, it's okay, dude. Don't worry. Life yeah. is hard, you know? So who needs a job? Marry a rich guy. The, the, the only That's thing that what I'm trying to do. Actually. Yeah, <laughs> we're all trying to do that. Yeah. The only thing that, that changed my mind on the on the girl aspect was uh, we did a story about uh, that that chick, the the hot ass like 
She looked like a sorority chick, but she was in a gang here in Texas, and then she lit that family on fire when they were sleeping. Holy shit. Strangers. <laughs> Straight up strangers. So, like, <laughs> she had gotten I off of... Why that's hilarious. I know. So funny. Oh, what it's, a it's, turn. Like, it's wild, dude. Lit them on fire. Lit them off, but, but That's not the story you expect to hear. Yeah, so, dude. All, I mean, come come on. on. She was this white girl in, like, Houston, and uh, she was originally convicted of, a, a like, a, a, a drive-by. And you were like, yo, what the fuck? Yeah, and then they didn't no have sense. enough evidence, so they had to let her go. And then two weeks later, she walked into a house at random, uh, didn't know the couple at all, doused the bed in gasoline at like 2.33 in the morning, they were sleeping, and then lit them on fire. So the, the one guy died, and then the other woman's got like severe burns and all this other shit, but like they have no idea why or whatever, and they thought it was like some type of gang initiation. If you could see what this girl looks like. There's no gang. You, you'd be like, there's no... Yeah, it's it's a normal like hot sorority girl where you're just like, what the fuck is going on here? God, that's so funny. Yes. What a turn. That's, yeah. So if you're gonna light somebody on fire, I don't know that I could protect you. Like fire would be the worst. Death. Like if if the guy woke, she let's say she's doused the bed in gasoline and the guy slept through it, and then he wakes up and he's like, what is this? And he just sees this hot girl. Yeah. And his wife, he's like, my wildest fantasy is about to come true. And then she just strikes a match, and then he's like, wait, what? Yeah. What's happening right now? <laughs> it turns into <laughs> a Rihanna video. Yeah, it's yeah. real fucking, what a turn, man. I yeah, did not think that story was going to end like that. But no, it's, it, it did. So she's back in jail now, and like everybody's shocked where they're like, holy shit, I can't believe this girl. I, like, you look at the picture, and you're like, there's no way somebody like that would do it. Yeah, uh, yeah, but here why, we are. Why is there some there? There actually is a relationship between physical attractiveness and a propensity for violence, right? There has to be. Yeah, less, yeah. less no, attractive people are angrier because nobody wants to f talk to them. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think so, right? Yeah. Although uh, at the higher end, probably later in life, sometime in your twenties or thirties. Uh, there's probably more sociopathic tendencies and more attractive people because right? uh, they don't yeah, have yeah, to yeah. develop those blocks for bad behavior throughout life because people let, like you let them get away with shit because they're women. You know what I yeah, mean? it's true. So you're responsible for at least some female sociopath. Out I would say at least one, probably the majority okay, of the population. Okay. It just me. Yeah, 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 just yeah. you, but yeah. you and I'm every... sure you tell these yeah. bitches what time it is all the time. I was gonna, I was gonna say uh, you and people like you, but yeah, we can't, we can't say that for a white man. Can't say that. Yeah. Can't say that. I just can't, I can't accept the idea that if you see a hot girl do something wrong, you're like, hey, 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 I'm the accountability police on this one. I think you're not getting by. You're not getting away with this. I, yeah, in in most cases, I would agree with you, but uh, if you want to go back and watch some of the tape, <laughs> oh yeah, I'm, oh yeah, I'm yeah. kind of a dick. Yeah. yeah. Is that oh, your game? Your no, no, no. There's no game. I just, I, I, I uh, Asperger's, you I guess. Suffer like I Dan's killed hundreds of people no, no, overseas. No, no, so, no, like, that that's. To do with anything, I think you're just numb to it. it. No, it's just something is either right or it is not right. And. Binary. I will change. I do agree with that. I will change the way I deliver information if it's someone that I feel like is at risk, like a child or something like that. Yeah. But for an adult human being, I'm going to tell them exactly what I think. Mm -hmm. Most of the time. Mm -hmm. yeah, all the yeah. time. Most of the no. time. No, if I said everything I think all the time, we wouldn't be sitting here right now. This place would be on fire. <laughs> and I would be one of the girls that he's talking about. <laughs> you ever dated a crazy girl? I, you know what? I hadn't really been in a real relationship until my wife. Really? I'm like a religious guy. I wasn't trying to have sex until I got married. All those other gay things. Yeah. And, um, that is super gay. My, but yeah, my wife now is uh, really attractive and high maintenance, and uh, she's great. She's actually a great woman, but yeah, that shit is work, dude. If she's high maintenance now, because look, it, your show keeps getting bigger and bigger, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then she's going to start asking for more shit. You know that, right? Like, yeah, no, the rate of inflation um, of relationships is it's unparalleled in anything in society. <laughs> yes. Like, like the gifts that I started, we've been dating, what, six years and married for a few months. When I first started dating her, gifts would be like, a, you know, a hundred bucks. Yeah. The rate of inflation, it's like fucking college tuition. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's like, yeah. what happened year to year that we've... A lot of administrative costs. Is yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> administrative the university costs. system. I don't, I don't know about that. Yeah, dude. It's, <laughs> it's a very bureaucratic thing, it a is, relationship. Yeah. 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 So I'm always caught up in red tape. With this well, that's, that's why you gotta you have to treat uh, your uh, female partner like the vice president, right? You give them something to do. Mm -hmm. Just something, yeah, yeah, nothing yeah, really something. important or anything like the border. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just give them something to do so they're out of the way. <laughs> Oh my goodness. But you're right, dude. It just keeps going up where you're just like, hey, dude, you used to be poor. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, what are we doing here? How upset were you this? when you started telling your wife how much you're really making on this podcast? Like, when it started uh, to get crazy, yeah. you're probably like, hey, this is great. There's a moment of happiness in the back of your mind. You're like, fuck, dude. Well, 
Oh, I will. I will say he this. Just went up another star in hotels. So. I know because then I flipped it and was just like, "Hey," because she's funny as shit. And I'm like, "Yo, do you want to do a show together?" We're on like episode 700. So really? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, she's were- great. She's like Christina P. Mm-hmm. Um, my my whole thing is if I could put the two of them together, mm-hmm. because of how well females sell advertising on podcasts, I go, dude, Tom and I would never have to fucking work ever again. Mm. That's it. Yeah. Just yeah. put the two of you guys just do a fucking mom show. They're around the same age, same amount of kids, everything oh, else. Oh, dude, and then a vulgar it would, mom show? Get it. out that's of it. here. Because she does Rocket one now. Ship. It's called uh, Where My Mom's At, but it's just her mm-hmm. talking to, like, producers and shit, right? Right. And I'm like, just put another fucking hot blonde girl together, and then that's it. Boom. Wait till that barstool bitch has kids. What's her name? Alex? Whatever. Alex. Andrew. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wait yeah. Till Nick, she has Nick kids. Yeah. Or yeah. She's, she took the fucking money and went to uh, Spotify. Yeah, 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 60 million. Dude, she's a beast. She's mm-hmm. a beast. Did you guys yeah, get she, offers? She does all the no, fucking work, no. too. Never that... got an offer, but this girl, when I heard how much work she put in, yeah. I was like, she deserves all it was of it. Very, yeah. uh, it was very enlightening for me how that all went public. I'm glad it did because I had no idea how much effort that one Record person Record for three hours in. and edit down into one is crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. Like a conversation. It takes a couple of days. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, tell, and we don't because we don't edit. I don't know if you guys do. We don't edit where it's just like, well, hey, we're, we definitely started doing more editing as we've gotten like longer episodes. Mm. And it's just like, let's cut out. Usually we'll be like, if if there's a segment that kind of drags, let's just cut it out and keep this thing moving. Yeah, because you guys go sometimes like two, three hours on on yours. Yeah. And that's a long fucking time. Like yeah. Dan and I decided a long time ago to kind of keep it between 60 to 90. And then yeah. if somebody's super fucking crazy, fascinating yeah. and great, it'll go as long as right. it, it needs right. to go. But for me personally, and I love Rogan. Mm-hmm. And I'm saying this as a fan, but each Rogan show was three hours. Yeah, it's a piece, my, it's a meal. You got to digest it. 100. percent So, and my drives aren't that long. So, like, I'm like, man, can I fucking skip yeah. ahead to right. whatever that shit is? But yeah. you don't know where the good shit is, and it's like, all right, how yeah. do you guys decide? We we just try to talk. I'll get topics together throughout the week. I'll have mm-hmm. a list of topics. Uh, usually Andrew will be like, hey, let's talk about this. Let's talk about this. Is there something I really want to talk about? I'll be like, hey, let's talk about this, and then. Um, we just, we talk it out and we just see where the conversation goes. And we try to always keep like the friendship forward in terms of like teasing each other about friend stuff or whatever. It's yeah. like, a, it's like a guy's hang like this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and then we'll just, we just kind of let the conversation flow wherever it goes. Yeah. Cause uh, like shit, some of these episodes are topping out of like three hours and I'm like, motherfucker. We have dude. one that's like four and a half, dude. That Who was, is that? A- DJ Academics. Okay. Yeah. And I was, exo- by the end you see me physically give up i put my feet on the table i slink down in the chair and i'm just <laughs> done i can't do it anymore i'm here i'm trying but you can see my body's like it's over buddy yeah yeah because mentally you just get four hours dude uh, yeah. i've engaged in conversation oh, i can't do it and we're on daily so it's like I, n- no oh you guys do daily oh yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, so boy. i'm like dude not a prayer yeah not a prayer. You can only do 60 to 90 minutes. yeah because i know with uh mcafee um part of his deal with are you a pat mcafee fan I think he's very funny. So, so do I. Uh, we love McAfee here. Um, and, but part of his deal with FanDuel was, hey, dude, you got to go daily and you got to go three hours a day. And it's like, when you're doing sports like that, first of all, athletes are boring as shit to most of them yeah. to interview. We've had some great ones. Uh, we've also had some ones where it's just like, Who's your like, favorite athlete to interview? Uh, Michael Irvin was probably I the- I fucking love Michael Irvin. Dude. dude. So he, and it, that was a wild one because uh, the first one was on Zoom. Yeah. And uh, no lie, I, he doesn't care if I tell the story, but um, no lie. So I'm looking at him in the monitor. It's like dead ahead, right? Yeah. And- uh, I see him. He's got a Louis Vuitton bag. Yeah. And he's literally just counting out thousands and thousands of dollars. I love this guy. And so I was much, like, dude. what? The? And we're not on the air. And I was like, and I looked at Dan and I was like, yeah, should we say anything? I don't know if he knows that we're on or whatever. And he goes, Ricky, Ricky, <laughs> come take the bag. T- take the bag. And I was like, hey, dude, uh, we can hear. I was like, you know, just don't worry. We're not recording or whatever. I go, I don't give a fuck. He's like, it, everything's rad. And he goes, uh, yeah, dude. He's like, dude, if I get one more fucking relative that asks me for money, dude, like, I get this guy $20,000. This guy $20,000. And then he ends up talking about it on the show. And I was like, holy shit, this is amazing. He's the um, best, dude. The best. And then two weeks later, we did a live show in Cowboy Stadium for the Canelo fight. Uh, Chuck Liddell's on our network. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so it was, it was Chuck. And, and uh, we, you know, at the end of the show, and I'm sure you guys are like this with guests, hey, if you ever need anything, hit us up, come right. by, whatever, right? right? Michael Irvin hit us up, which is like, yo, y- y'all going to that fight? I heard you got a suite. Dude, and I was my like, dream come true. I grew up, I was born in what, 84, so the 90s Cowboys. Yeah. That was like right. I wish it happened later because I didn't appreciate what was happening. Mm-hmm. I was, I just thought that's what football was. The Cowboys go to the Super Bowl. <laughs> but 
that team meant so much to me because it was mm. I was a kid, dude. And Michael Irvin, looking back, was my favorite of the triplets. Yeah. Oh it was yeah. All heart, dude. I'm a big guy. If you got, he was heart, definitely I'm the most in. entertaining for sure. Oh, it will in, in first down. Come on, heart wise, yeah, dude. So when he came back, he, he called and was just like, "Yo, can I come hang in the suite?" I was a guest, so he came, watched the Canelo fight with us. We hung with, out with him and and did a show. And the thing about him is, is when you need it, he's on, like fucking on, and he's very very smart. Um, and he's always on, so he's a great fucking interview. And uh, that guy, I mean, shit, I could do a daily show with, with him all day long, and, like, yeah. it, it would destroy. Like, yeah. he's just that fucking good. Yeah. Um, but when I watch him on, like, the NFL Network, because uh, they do those shitty Thursday night right, games, right, yeah, yeah. Uh, he's stuck with his shitty crew, and I'm just yeah. like, uh, you can tell he just hates it. Yeah. He's just like, oh. The other two guys I really like are also NFC East guys, Fred Smoot. From the Redskins. Oh, I have right not now. heard him. Dude. Oh, he was he's, great as a player. I mean, he wasn't dude. a good player, but he was great at trash talk. He's, yes. He's hilarious. And he is a very, very fast, hilarious, and he, yeah. a very knowledgeable guy. Makes yeah. sense. And then... Uh, Freddie Mitchell. Freddie Mitchell. Eagles. Yep. Back in the day. Yeah. You remember uh, Fred X? I remember Brian Mitchell. No. I don't uh, remember Freddie Mitchell. Okay. Freddie Mitchell, 4th uh, and 26. Oh. Uh, with uh, McNabb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. It was against the Cowboys. I yeah. should know that. Yeah. Hey, well, um, maybe you're blocking out. Know. <laughs> and he was so cool that, like, we did the show with him, and then we went to do the Super Bowl in Atlanta. I think it was the Rams Patriots one, and uh, yeah, and the he worst just, Super Bowl of all time. Yeah, yeah. It was like 13 3. But he called and I was just like, hey, dude. Uh, I heard you guys are going on the Super Bowl. I was like, yeah. And he's like, what are you saying? I was like, we got an Airbnb, like five bedrooms, or whatever. He goes, Got an extra bedroom, man. I'm going down there. He's like, I'd love to hang with with y'all. And I was like, That's fucking incredible. That was yeah, great. we partied all weekend. Uh, who do we interview? Uh, uh, running back from from the Broncos. Oh, uh, Terrell Davis. Yeah. Oh yeah, we had Terrell Davis on. Oh, yeah. man. TD. We had TD on. Famer, yeah. 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 For four years, he was a Hall of Famer. Yeah. Pretty yeah. Good. He's that good. Yeah. yeah. He got John Elway Super Bowls. Oh yeah. And then he what do he, he retired young man? I think he yeah, was like he had 29. That crazy knee injury. I think ACL, MCL, PCL, or LCL, something like that. Like his knee was fucked. They gave him like three more L's. Like yeah. that's how <laughs> that's how fucked up his name was. Like, yeah, TCL, <laughs> RCL, XCL, yeah. Yeah. XLR. Uh, but he was a blast. Yeah, there was a bunch of people down there for that. But uh, yeah, Freddie rocked. But usually with most athletes, it's very buttoned up of like, try to get my hundred percent and all that other shit. And get I'm just like, here. dude, I can't do it. So McAfee doing that shit three hours a day with with those guys, like well, that's he crazy. Picks the right people though, obviously. Like Aaron Rodgers is gonna talk shit. Obviously, he doesn't care. Yeah, yeah you have to either get a guy that's at a point in his career where he's got enough clout where he can say whatever the fuck he wants and nobody's going to be able to do anything about it or somebody that's retired. Otherwise, yeah. they, they're not going to... Usually, they're not going to be very honest. Yeah. Who was your favorite guest that you guys have had on Flagrant 2? <sighs> Alex Jones. You, yeah. knew, you knew that. You, that was a leading I question. I didn't know that. Who else could it be? <laughs> I didn't know that. I forget. Uh, academics was great, but Alex Jones, man, fuck, because you go in there, and I didn't know much about him, and... I know the Sandy Hook shit, and I'm like, look, I know it's going to be great content, but I've, I've been critical of this guy. I feel like I'm going to be hypocritical if I have him on. Mm -hmm. And then the second you have him on, he's the most charismatic fucking person yes. I've ever met in my life. Yep. I don't care if we disagree on politics shit. I don't, this, this thing we're all doing in society now where you can't talk to people who are different than you politically, yeah. I think that's fucking weird on both ends. Same. I, I had a conversation about that the other day, and the conversation was like, um, somebody said... I can't believe you could work with somebody that thinks or that 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 voted this way. Somebody had said this to one yeah, of my friends, right? And like, well, like how like how did people ever do that? How did they ever work together? Like because nobody fucking gave a shit. You know what? Like though? it didn't come up at fucking. Work. Our parents yeah. used to say, I don't know. I remember like older. My parents didn't really say it, but like because in India you love talking politics, but like I would hear that all the time. Don't talk politics. Mm -hmm. Now I see why. Yeah. Our parents used to not talk politics because it was just like, who give, you do your thing, I do mine, that's yeah. it. Now, I can't associate with you if your thing isn't my thing. Right. But I was like, in my head, when Alex came on, like, am I going to look like a fucking hypocrite that whatever? Uh, but as soon as he came on, he's just, he's truly the funniest guy. Oh, oh dude. He's very and he's on. He's smart. He gets what's funny about him. He gets what he's saying. He's in on it. Yeah. People who think everything he's saying, he believes, you're probably an idiot. But... If you don't think everything he's saying is at least funny, you're an idiot too. Yeah, and I've said this numerous times on the show because I think he's been on two or three times. We did the election night gig with him, um, and uh, and we'll get to why you guys pulled the video. Right. Uh, but with, I've always said the same thing. Is like I view him as an entertainer. He is, man. And if if you want to take shit seriously or not seriously, like a lot of it does come true. Some of it doesn't. Yeah. I, I don't know what the basis of it is, and I don't really care 
He's entertaining, and that's what we're here to do and he's all day a long. Gifted speaker. Yes. You, you talk about doing three hours. Imagine just your fucking self. Mm -hmm. Three, like four, six. five, six oh, hours. Dude. Bang, bang, yeah. bang. So yeah, he's gonna say a lot of shit. Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. I was, and that's that's actually what you said is when I it clicked with me. I mean, I was already like this guy's funny and all that, but then I was like, oh. You are a stand-up comic. You just don't know it. Yeah. yeah. What well, a stand-up does. He's a does. political Andy Kaufman. Is what yes. Is. Yeah. What a stand-up does is we take some shit that's supposed to be indefensible, and then we try to find a way to defend it. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying anything about all of his opinions or whatever, but at least once or twice, he's probably done some shit like that, yeah. where it's like, hey, let me have this crazy premise, this crazy idea, and then let me justify it. And I was like, if you focused on stand-up, I think I said this to him, <laughs> you would be one of the greatest stand-ups of all time. Mm-hmm. And again, I'm not trying to disparage any of his beliefs or whatever, but no, just no. his brain, the way it works. Very fast. That's what well, if you it think is. about what you're describing right now is uh, kind of the Socratic method, right? So you yes. develop a premise and you try to falsify it. And if the premise is unfalsifiable, then it's not a premise at all. Right. You know what I mean? So if you, it's like, the, uh, prove God doesn't exist. Like, okay, cool, man. Let's yeah. just move on to the yeah. next conversation. Yeah, 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 That's yeah. stupid. But when people say things like, uh, when people make empirical claims, about the universe and you can't falsify that, meaning there's no amount of evidence I could come up with in any hypothetical scenario to falsify that claim. Mm -hmm. That means that that claim isn't a claim at all. Mm -hmm. That's just an opinion or some, some fucking vague right. statement. Okay. But that's what you do in comedy, right? You take the premise and you work backwards from it. Like, yeah. wouldn't it be funny if this, I mean, this is a super fucked up situation. How do I make that funny? Right. Yeah. Right, because like you, the, the story he told other, earlier about the hot girl or whatever, the thing that got you was not expecting yeah, 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 what a fucking yeah. Yeah. That's so good. Just lit him on fire, dude. And it, lit him on fire. It challenges not people. Not kill them. It yeah. challenges people. Like when they hear something and they're like, "What the fuck?" And they're starting to feel maybe offended or 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 grossed out or whatever it is, and all of a sudden it becomes funny. That's a nice journey to take. Yes, on. it is the best. If you don't initially feel like at least shocked at what I'm saying and not sh what well, not horrified, but just like what? Yeah. It's probably not a joke I'm going to enjoy telling. I have a joke about how I don't believe in white male privilege. I love telling that in New York. I have a joke <laughs> about how I do believe in white female privilege. I love telling that to these liberal white women yeah. who somehow decided they're minorities. Uh, I have a joke about how um, there's American privilege. These are all things that initially you're like, eh. Yeah. I'm working on a bit right now about how women should support prostitution. Like, you should be the ones getting us hookers. Because at the, I haven't figured out how to make it super funny yet, but the idea is like, this is a job, right? This is a part of the job you don't really enjoy fulfilling yeah. our you're physical outsourcing. needs. Yeah, you're a outsourcing. Part of the job I don't really enjoy is fulfilling her emotional need. If there was a service where I could outsource just some random guy to come over every night and just talk this bitch's ear off, yeah. I had platinum level membership. Yeah, it's called a, <laughs> called a gay best friend. Yeah, gay best yeah. friend. But I need him all the time. Like, let me just mm. pay you to just be here. Yeah. And then go home. And I don't want a real connection. That's cheating. Cheating is <laughs> fucked up. A hooker, a hand job for Robert Kraft. These are business transactions. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And Robert was, look, that was a tense day. He's also AFC, <laughs> NFC championship. We were there. Yeah. That was an intense game that went to overtime that day. So, yeah. Did he deserve to oh, get a fucking Super Bowl HJ? Sunday. Yeah. No, 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 it was the AFC, uh, it was the AFC championship. Oh, AFC. It was, oh, it was a AFC Chiefs NFC versus, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, it was the Chiefs versus, Chiefs versus Patriots. Patriots. That was a good game. Yeah, we, we were there. there. Yeah. Wow. And so he got jacked off that morning and the story broke. And Do you we think were, he came harder at the hand job or when that interception got called back because of the offsides? Oh, boy. Definitely the offsides for yeah. me. I 100%. Right there. 100%. But when you saw that game, you were like, yeah, that's. You uh, got to do what you got to do. Yeah. Justifiable. Again, I think they're probably sex uh, slaves or whatever, so that's fucked. You shouldn't do that. About but 43 just, million but worldwide, just, give or take. Really? Yeah. No shit. There's more slaves right now than at any point in human history. It's crazy. By a wide, by a wide margin. That's where it's fucked. You don't go to that place. But if there's a high class <laughs> rub down, I, you know I mean? if, if, they're, if they're getting a hand job from anything with Asia in the title, let's not go there. Yeah. 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 She you was, know, so Asia, she was Russia. Chained to the wall. Yeah. If, <laughs> if that sorority bitch is out here giving hand jobs, ah, hey. Yeah. yeah, I mean, what's the worst that's going to happen other than maybe your DNA shows up at a crime scene later, right? Yeah, that's, that's about it. Dude. Yeah, but that's just about make, her, it. make her wash her hands before. That's yeah. Like every massage should end. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and look, if you believe in yourself, too, because that's a key to it as well. Mm -hmm. If you believe you're good looking enough that you deserve it. Yeah. Then are they really a slave that day? <laughs> like, that's the fucked up thing is like. I can't, this 
give it a day off. Actually, yes, when you get it was like, it. hey, dude, this was this was a nice thing for you that I did. This was a gift from me to you. Like I, it you could have been a fat trucker. Give me a hand job. Yeah, you, you like, <laughs> and I gave you money for that. Like that's amazing. I've It'd tried. be like if Kate Upton came in and, and was just like, dude, I've, you've got to go down on me and then fuck me in the ass. You'd be like. Oh, no, 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 I see, guess. That's, hold on. The second part is where it all goes wrong. Yeah. If it was just, <laughs> you've got to go down on me. No, no it's like that episode of uh, Workaholics where Adam had the fucking dild- chin dildo. Like that, that. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah lady yeah, showed yeah. up and was just like abusing him the whole time. It's got to be like that. Otherwise, <laughs> if you get any pleasure out of it, it's not, that's not a gift anymore. Yeah, that's I awesome. guess. I don't know. Uh, look. <laughs> One man's trash is another man's <laughs> treasure. Like I don't, I don't need to get in. I didn't know there was that many sex slaves worldwide. Uh, wh- yeah, there's a lot, man. Uh, How are they defining slave? Let's try to find some. Yeah, is that Britney Spears? I don't know if slave or no. <laughs> yeah, I don't, you know? I, don't, I don't know if I'd go splitting hairs on that one. That might, get, <laughs> might get a little dicey. There might be some funny in splitting the it's, hairs, is what I'm saying. Yeah, right? so there could be. It was forcible rape, and not the not the regular. Kind. Not the. It wasn't the <laughs> like the horrific. Who the fuck kind? said the yeah. phrase forcible rape for the first time? And what did they think rape was before that? Yeah, yeah, that you had to add a word to it. Yeah, yeah. that that's, was that's even worse. When I, people always say the age of consent. I used to, I guess I get it now, but I used to be like, what's the age of no consent? Is there an age where she's like 60 and you don't even need it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what's the expiration date on that yeah, age of consent, yeah. lady? Yeah. <laughs> Dude just waiting around outside yeah. of fucking nursing homes. Like, <laughs> well, well, like got the birthday cake five ready. Five shit. That's a kink. We don't kink shame here. Never have, never will, yeah. by the way. Oh, good for you guys. Yeah. Because we got to, well, he's not here today because he's getting set up in Nashville. But uh, our producer, he's into fucking older women. Yeah. Like, late 50s 60s he's a 30 year old dude okay. and you're just like what the fuck okay. he just wants to marry a rich old lady with a boat that's his dream so he, he went to school in missouri is so. that a kink or is that a lifestyle choice it's like a gold digger Can't she's tell. not a, that's not a kink if you i wish he was here because if you if you saw him he's one of those guys where you're like man i can't tell like you could be secretly gay you could be you not could be like rich or aids too yes or both yes 100 these, these days it doesn't matter but yeah. like in the 80s, are you, are you rich artist or you do you have AIDS? It's one of the two. <laughs> yeah. Because they're too skinny or what? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Too skinny. Like they look. Uh, he wears the same pair of jeans. They look disheveled all the time. Yeah, yeah. For no reason. For no reason. He makes, he makes great money. And I'm like, yeah. what, what the fuck are you doing? Like, now these gay motherfuckers built like you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 If somebody. Uh, if you told me you were gay, that'd be the most believable thing I heard on this well, podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Got some coming out to do, I guess. <laughs> didn't didn't Greg Jarrell? I have no problem telling hot women what to do. <laughs> yep. I'm in great shape. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, it all adds sure. up. There's a lot of gay going on. Yeah. Tons. I, I remember when I saw my first uh, ripped gay dude, like a jacked gay yeah. dude. I was in. I was living in New York, and uh, the, the Pride Parade came right by my yeah. my place. Shirtless, was a fucking Super Bowl. Parade, Holy right? shit, yeah. dude! Uh, and they were all like Gronkowski. Yeah, these and guys I was like, are monsters. Fuck. Man. Yeah, and it was like Stonewall, yeah. Stonewall, motherfuckers. All I kept <laughs> hearing, like, and I was like, oh shit, dude. Yeah. Now that's Greg Giraldo used to do a joke about that. Yeah, yeah. It was so good. I think it was like in 2004. He I was, heard this bit online yeah. on YouTube like a yeah. decade ago. But yeah. you probably know it better than me. I don't. I don't. Is know. he still alive? No. No. He he's the one. That, okay. He's, he OD'd. Yeah. Uh, it, it was uh, some to the effect of we have these weird con- conceptions of what gayness is. But now all these gay dudes just walked around chiseled all the time. So there's going to be some point in the future where everybody's just over the gay thing. And dudes, like, sees a kid that's in high school that's a linebacker. Man, he's built like a gay guy. He, yeah. might, he might play in the NFL one he's day. He's built like a yeah. real cocksucker yeah. or something like that. It's a really yeah. funny idea. It's a good bit. Yeah. It's, it's a good bit. But, uh, man, it's true. Like, dude, those guys were fucking jacked where I was like, oh, shit, dude. Uh, one came out for the 49ers the other day, the linebacker. If a guy is really in shape or the Raiders. and Raiders. Mm-hmm. doesn't play sports, I think he's gay. If you are in great shape and you don't play sports, in my mind, you got to be gay. Yeah. It's like a male flight attendant at this point. Yeah, what yes. would be the point? Yeah. Qui bono? Who benefits from the fact that you're going to work out? Yeah. Yeah, yeah you know, exactly. You're, you're a natural investigator. That's your problem. You're very inquisitive. <laughs> yeah. Are you saying every male uh, stew? Because we call them stews in the biz. You know that, right? No. Yeah, it's not a stewardess. It's, oh, a, it's, a, stew. it's a stew, yeah. Okay, got I just it. made that up. But um, uh, you think those stews are all gay, the male ones? You should be. If you're yeah. not, I don't respect you. I agree. Exactly. If you're, if you're gay, a waiter, I'm with it. If you're if, not, I'm like, get a job, dude. It's yeah. embarrassing. <laughs> Fucking embarrassing to me. If you're a waiter at a restaurant that's not a steakhouse and you're not gay, I, look, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> that's true, too. I just want you to be gay because yeah. I know I'm going to get an honest answer out of you. Yes. Yep. Yeah. You know what I mean? 
steakhouse. Like the gay dude is going to. not a steakhouse. It's such a funny caveat. But it yeah. really is true. We're like if you think you about it. Here, yeah, dude. Talking. I know. It makes sense out here. Because you like, know you're making good money in a steakhouse, and yeah. that's a career, it's right? This straight guy brought me enchiladas the other day. What the fuck? Yeah. yeah. Well, it's not, the, it's not what he brings you. It's that if I order something shitty on the menu, there is a 0% chance that gay dude's not going to say something about it. Oh, he'll yeah. tell you. He's definitely he'll going to tell it, yeah. me. And the straight guy's just like, I don't give a fuck yeah, about this guy. Oh, yeah. This guy. He sees me as competition. The gay guy sees me as somebody he needs to impress. You know uh, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You are it's really that simple. I, 100%. Look, I've, I'm showing all the signs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> look, we're, and we're all getting there as a society. Yeah. I look at those fucking uh, BTS kids. Oh, yeah, yeah, The, yeah, the yeah, Korean, yeah, yeah. the, the K-pop yeah, shit. Yeah, there's a group of Caitlyn Jenners just doing music. Yeah. I mean, what the fuck? It's it's like a little, they're like little dolls, but you know, and China, I can't really tell. China banned their music because they're like, they had some law they passed. Uh, Mark on our podcast told us, but it's like something like no effeminate men. There's no, be no displayed images of de- effeminate men or some shit. Like yeah, 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 yeah. And they're, they're, they've changed the textbooks and everything of like, hey, dude, we need to create a more manly culture. Whatever the fuck those kids are on yeah. and like, even when they're singing. It's just enough yeah. English, but it's kind of broken, and yeah. you're like, and they're all high pitched. And you're like, what the fuck is really going yeah, on there? And I feel like it's just a goddamn uh, magic trick because it's like, oh, they're the number one band in the world. Every time one of them does something, everybody flips the fuck out, and now they're trying to get them on albums. So like Coldplay, just put them on a new song, and you're just like, what? I, I remember the the first people I met that were into K-pop. I was like, why? What? what? Like, yeah. Why? Why? It doesn't make any sense. Uh, Bollywood I, is right there, guys. Come on. It's it doesn't make any sense. Money. Yeah, exactly, South dude. South Korea don't need that shit. They got enough. Because they've been fucking singing and dancing for years. No, South Bollywood. Korea has been one of the in, on the leading edge of technology for years, not singing uh, and dancing. Yeah. So they they're so in two thousand three, uh, I wrote a paper in college about this. Their average internet speed for a for a home was fifty megabits per second. If you know anything about the internet, that's fast as fuck. For these days, for a role. Oh, yeah. For, for like a country. We don't even have that here. But that was their whole country because South Korea invested in the infrastructure to build all that shit. No they, shit. They, and they've been producing a lot of stuff. And that's for why, a long time. in the age of social media, they're kings. They're yeah. taking over the internet. Oh, yeah. 100%. Like, they're, they've got it figured out. But, like, when's the last time you heard anything bad about a South Korean? Right? No, it's true. They've, they've, maybe Never. This, this could all be propaganda. Yeah, it could yeah, be. The South like Koreans. Maybe brother. North Korea's dope as shit. <laughs> we don't know it. Yeah, and fucking <laughs> those interview dicks sell us an apology for lying or whatever. Mm-hmm. I don't know. <laughs> I was thinking it's like if your twin brother's a serial killer, like anything you do is pretty great. Yeah, like yeah. if you're Bill Clinton and Roger Clinton is your birthday. I don't know if that hits anymore. Like nah, Roger, look, years. Roger took a lot of fucking shit, and he was a great sax player. Oh, what, if, what if you're Jeb Bush and your terrible. brother's George W. Bush? Is that more recent? That's a, yeah, it's a gimpy, Dude, you're, you're still, still not president. Who is, does Biden have a good brother? <laughs> no. Does he have any brothers? Uh, yeah, I think his, old, didn't he have an older brother or something? They sure? gotta be dead by now, right? Has Come to on. be. He's well, 79. Yeah. If he's got an older brother, it'd be like, uh, fucking, who's the one, who's the one left from the Golden Girls? Betty White? Uh, yeah, Betty White. It'd be like, oh yeah, she's wishing her mom a happy Mother's Day. You're like, there's no fucking way she's alive. You're 99. Look, yeah. with uh, her level of income and advances in modern science. Oh, I agree. You can probably live forever She's at some point. He's at least point. cryogenically frozen somewhere, I think is what he said. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I think the same thing with BTS. Like, if you pull down their pants, I think it's just like, like a Ken doll. Like an action figure. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah I could see that. Although I, I, Something I, fucked up I started going. a company when I was in high school to make genitals for action figures, and I couldn't get it off the ground, unfortunately. No. Uh, I kept. I went to Walmart, no. Toys R Us, which still exists <laughs> at the time, no. Like, I'm, I'm just trying to represent... You know, the proper what genitalia look like. Yeah. What happens when a girl goes, she's been playing with dolls her whole life and she goes to suck some dude's hog the first time. And yeah, it's that's the thing. This, I don't want to see my daughter sucking Ken's dick. You know what yeah. I mean? That's Come true on. too. Yeah, you don't just want her experience. Deep throating Ken. Come I on. I mean, how big is it going to be on a little doll though? Let's be it's real. An, enough yeah. that she'll put in her mouth. Do you have a daughter? No, no. I, I, I should, that's what I was saying earlier, kind of alluding to. I think I would prefer to have a daughter. I never thought I'd feel that way. Yeah. But, like, I think I'd prefer to have a daughter than a son because I think a son and I would not get along. No shit. Because I'm very, like, with, with tough love, kind of. Mm-hmm. So with a girl, it's easy for me to turn it off and nurture and all that. But with a guy, I'm like, man, just shut the fuck. Like, do it. Just do it or don't. I don't want to hear your excuses. I don't, and I think that would cause him to be like, yo, I, I don't like my dad. But if you walked in and saw her giving a blowjob, would that not... Comple- Turn me on? No, 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 no not that. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine? You're just like, keep going. <laughs> keep make finish. Finish him off. No, but I mean, uh, that's what, I, I think that as a, as a dude, you're just like, ah, oh, God damn it. Because I had a buddy of mine who had a daughter, right? And I yeah. go, what was the experience for you? Because the kids are grown. Yeah. And uh, I was like, what was the experience for you? And he goes, man, 
Worst day of my life, dude. I, I walked in and uh, do. Uh, oh my god! Oh yeah, dude. Dog. Oh, I didn't even think. So about in that. the base, he said they were in the basement. Uh, it was late. It was after like homecoming or whatever, and she was dating like the quarterback or whatever the fuck on the on the football uh, team. You got them. That guy's piping your girl down. Come on, piping her, dude, yeah. and just from behind. And he's just <laughs> and he because he it woke him up. Like he was just hearing this violent banging and like he genuinely didn't know what it was. He was like, I was kind of disoriented, whatever. Went down the stairs, went in the basement, and then he goes. I just see her just getting fucking railed from behind, like over this couch, and I'm like, "Oh my god, was that the worst?" And he goes, "The worst." And he goes, "I can't, I can't get that image yeah, out of my mind." That that wouldn't even affect me. He said, "When the towers went down, he goes, bro, it was worse. That like that was worse than the, when the towers went That's down." That's hilarious. Yeah, because her tower went down multiple oh, times. Oh god. No. I mean, it was, and when I when I sat there and thought about it, because I'm on the phone with him, and I'm like, and you could hear this was years ago. And you know like, why it's worse though? Because I thought it would be like innocent missionary sex, like. But this girl is getting fucked. If you're getting fucked doggy style over a couch. But think about how many times you've done it. She's a loose little gal. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. That's par. Right? <laughs> we, let's be real here about this our This guy's a wives. fucking Viking, dude. No. <laughs> I don't know what's sitting next to me, but I'm having trouble understanding. He's like, yeah, that's, just what you, that's how you fuck, right? You, in high school, you bend a girl over a couch and hit it from the back. You just can't not shake that Not only memory. that, but that's not like... It shouldn't be that shocking as an adult to see that, right? I walk in on people having sex all yeah, the time. But it's your daughter. And homecoming. She's 16 at this point. Yeah. 16. Yeah. What do you do? What is it? Like that? Like, would you be freaked out if you saw your son take he, a shit? It's he's just probably a shitty father. No. I'm going to tell you right now, I bet you, I bet he was absent a lot. No, no, no. He was he was there. And, like, he's a great guy, good dad, all that. Because like, well, I've, I've gone through all of these scenarios in my mind, like, yeah. trying to break this down. And I was just like, there was no other explanation than, like, obviously kids are kids. And, fuck, I'm sure you railed your wife out, doggy style, like, a week ago, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yeah, my wife. You yeah, know it, what I mean? It, exactly. But with girlfriends and everything else, like, that's going to happen. Yeah. And if you just walk in on it and it's your daughter, though, and you're just like, what do you say? Put a sock on the door, you dumb bitch. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck what else did you say? What is this? Yeah. He's I mean, trapped now. Yeah. Now, yeah, you can't be attacked. You, you can't go the, anywhere. That, that mic became self-aware and attacked that guy. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta be careful. Holy shit. But I go, I go, what was the statement that you said? What, 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 did, you, what did you say? Because there's got to be a statement to break yeah. this up at this you point, right? And you can't go over kids. and just knock out the dude because yeah. you pull out your that's phone not and cool you play the fucking, your daughter. You pull out your phone and play you, the curb your enthusiasm. Music. No, no. <laughs> you just walk out, right? I, his, his phrase was, Brian, take, take your dick out of my daughter. And just wow. stone cold like that. And it was just like, and, and he froze, she froze, and it was the whole thing or whatever. And I go, what, hap Brian, what happened after that? Because he said the daughter came up and apologized or whatever. He's like, look. You don't have to apologize. I just don't ever want to talk about it again. He goes, if if you're having sex, just be respectful and like, uh, that's that's about it. And moved on that's with his day. Talk. It is, and like he, like I said, he's a good 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 dude. And like when I heard that story, I was like, oh shit, dude. I love that. Fuck. I love that the talk thing because if it doesn't happen when they're like nine, ten, eleven, don't bother. You've you they have outgrown your knowledge base at that point. As, oh yeah, as fucking teenage like young tweens and teenagers these days. Yeah, today, there's yeah. no talk yeah. that a forty year old yeah. dude can have with a fucking thirteen year old that's gonna yeah. be productive, right? Yeah. Let's let's. He'll probably teach that. you about sex. Yeah. Oh, dude, because they're so far ahead. Porn, like yeah. we didn't have any of this shit, right? Yeah, yeah. Now they have access to all of it, and it's like you wonder too if it changes society of like, all right, cool, man, you've got to do like spit gag fucking anal yeah, to you know I'm sure and it's kind of become normalized in this way that every, uh, girls watch it too i remember comics talking about that like fucking younger girls it's like clear they watch porn like they do the things like, yeah they, someone guy was saying like they'll look back when you're hitting it from the back and do like the porn look or whatever and they'll like moan differently and it's like it sex is just gonna be different it is yeah yeah and it's it's fucking crazy to think about where you're just like all right sweet I've also heard they're not as horny as we were in the sense of chasing pussy because they have that at it's the disposal that. at all times. It, it is over the last 25 years, the average male's testosterone has dropped by 40%. Yes. And because of plastics, mostly. You know what's weird, dude, is I just had this conversation at a, so my next door neighbors, they've got high school kids and we went to the little homecoming parade yeah. and, and all that other stuff. And uh, uh, I was talking to so the, one dude is on the football team, and his mom uh, is our next door neighbor. And, and I was like, "Hey, there's a bunch of hot girls rolling around." I'm like, "Oh yeah," so, so, so. and I go, "Is your son with all of these guys?" And, he, and she goes, "No, they're fucking weird now." And I was like, "What?" And she was like, "Yeah, none of them are like as crazy as we were back in the day, yeah. and like they just don't do that type of shit." Yeah. 
And I didn't believe it. And then I saw their interactions and I was like, oh, fuck, you're right. Um, it is, huh. it's, it's definitely changed. And I wonder if you're, if you're right, if it's the access to it where you're just like, well, rather go home and just jack off I to, just, I don't have to deal no with matter rejection. how much porn I fucking watch. I still want to fuck all the time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. I don't think that's, I don't know, man. I think it's a, I I'll think put this guy on the front of a ship right now and everybody will take over a country. We didn't even know existed. <laughs> <laughs> Hundred percent. We could do it <laughs> with the will. Yeah, yeah, you got it, dude. That's all you You're need. the guy. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> fucking this guy is a fucking. That's a man, dude. I like doing stuff. <laughs> I like doing to, stuff. To be, I like taking over lands. <laughs> to be honest, that all sounds like a lot of work. To <laughs> right? No, but you can do it, man. If I'm I could, you. I could. But if I could pay somebody to do it for me, that would be a lot better. Yeah, That's and again, through now. Christ, anything is possible. <laughs> and uh, I think, I think we need to always go back to that. That's a good point. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if y'all name your episodes, but that's a great name of the episode. Through Christ, anything is possible. We yeah. do. We do name the episodes. Um, going back to the Alex Jones thing. Right. You guys had to pull down the episode. Uh, give your give your co-host a shout out because uh, I, I actually hit him up. Uh, uh, and I said, hey, dude, uh, we ran into to an issue with YouTube. Right. We got a bad one. Uh, so we did the election show live on YouTube. Yeah, it was yeah. like 300,000 live viewers and all that okay. crazy shit. Right. The second we went off air that night, that episode... Good luck finding it. You have to type in all caps lock hyphen, uh, like everything. It does not exist. We couldn't even find it on our back end on YouTube. Really? We didn't gain a subscriber for close to six months um, wow. after that. And so when yours got ripped, um, I had hit up uh, Schultz through Ari and I just said, hey, can you ask them how they got around it and like the monetization and being able to get subscribers right. back? Right. What was the problem? Did they reach out to you and say, hey, you got to pull this? Apparently the problem was that Alex said multiple times that the vaccine gives you cancer or something like that. Uh, 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 and so they pulled it down for misinf medical misinformation, but it was our first strike. So it's like, you're fine, but this is this episode is gone. And that is, I really believe this. After Alex left the first episode, I said that I think that's, Maybe the best episode of any podcast there has ever been. It was just nuts. Nuts. Yeah. Yeah. And I think Andrew and I have a way of, um, not where they were the only ones, we have a way of kind of unlocking what's funny about him. We just kind of like laugh as opposed to treating it all as news. Yeah. 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 And uh, it was just so fun. I mean, it was just so fun. We had a fucking show with him. We had to put it over on Patreon because it was just too much. Yeah, and it's yeah. still there, by the way, if you want to go drink a breath podcast on Patreon. Um, there's a full size uh, Michael Myers doll out in the lobby. I don't know if you saw it. No, I did not. It's like six, five, right? right. So mid show, and we were getting trash with him. I right. mean, all day long. Yeah, he's, he's great for that. It was mm -hmm. best. And it was on a Sunday. We were in the middle of the show. He was, he was ordering P. Terry's next door. Um, so we were eating burgers and shit. Yeah. Then he dragged in the Michael Myers thing live um, and started punching it in the face on the thing. He like, hit something like that with us. Took off his shirt. Um, and it was one of the greatest things of all time. And it was fucking hilarious yeah. and all that other shit. Uh, but... When you guys has disappeared, I was like, oh, fuck. I wonder yeah. if the same thing happened to you. Because you get three strikes on YouTube. Yeah. And so that, that, that was one. And did you get a phone call? I, so Andrew is, I mean, he's so big on YouTube. He tends to, like, he'll know whoever he can know or whatever, mm -hmm. and he'll deal with that. Uh -huh. um, and obviously, that's my brother. So, like, as much as great as the podcast is for my life, I don't ever want it to adversely affect him. So, like, if there's any strike, I'd have just been like, do whatever the fuck you got to do to, to, to be cool mm -hmm. on your account. But I think it was, this is the first time we've ever had to check you on anything. So, we're taking the episode down. You're not getting it back. And that's it. I think that was essentially the conversation. I got think it. That he might have asked, can we get it back? And they, they said maybe, and then they didn't, or something like that. But, like, mm -hmm. I, yeah. I was Did you end up you. posting it somewhere else? People posted it. We didn't back it up like fucking morons. Oh, shit. We, we back up everything. Yeah, we don't back up anything. And I still don't think we've learned our lesson, quite frankly. Yeah. But uh, Wait, they wouldn't even give you like the. Back no, 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 nothing. nothing. So if we were like, smarter like you guys, we would just put it up on something else. Yeah. Because um, we lost. Some people have it uploaded in like 720 or 1080, but the 4K is gone. Gone. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it's so good. If anybody wants to check out one episode of our podcast, go find that episode online. Oh, dude, it was it well, was it's on SoundCloud. Uh, amazing the audio, anyways. Yeah, you yeah, didn't. The, the SoundCloud is straight. Yeah, but yeah. The visual is also so funny. 
Dude, so I was, my story with it was, I was halfway through, because I like to watch podcasts. Yeah. Like, um, if I'm at home, and as long as the game's not on, I'll just put it on the background right. and, and watch it, because I think you get better context when you're able to see what's yeah. actually going right, on. Right. And uh, so I had that on, and I paused it, like, midway through, and I was like, ah, shit, I gotta go do X, and then I went back to it two days later, and it was gone. Yeah. And I was like, fuck, yeah, dude. That happened with a lot of people. And that's like when I hit him up. Episode. Yeah. 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 It was rough, dude. I mean, that was our best performing episode also. It was like a million plus or whatever. And then yeah. was, uh, I thought it was a good episode. Like, even if you didn't like Alex, you should sit down and watch that. Because I had a lot of people hit me up like, yo, I didn't like this guy. I don't feel, I don't necessarily love him, but I don't hate him anymore. Yeah, he changed same. The way he, same. He exposed him to a lot of people that wouldn't have otherwise been. Oh, yeah, this is the second time he was on. He carried me out of the yeah. room. Held, held me over his shoulder, came back in with a slice of pizza, and then ate the fucking thing <laughs> while he's holding me. I mean, he just, he's an entertainer, dude. He's an entertainer. That's great. Um, what, what was the point that you guys really blew up? I think quarantine helped a lot. Um, I think as Andrew blew up, we blew up. And, uh, yeah, I remember during quarantine, you guys might have had a similar thing, but that first weekend when none of us knew what the fuck was going on in mm -hmm. early March, Andrew was really panicked about it. I was in Canada doing shows, and I was like, I wasn't even sure if they were going to let me back in the country because, you know, we, there was rumors they're going to shut down Manhattan yeah. completely. Uh, but then Andrew and I talked, and we essentially said, how do you want to do this? And we both were like, look, I'm cool. I think there's an opportunity here where everybody else is going to be doing Zoom podcasts, and if we meet in person, we could really grow. And I think at that point, we are like 100,000, 150,000 listens an episode total. Um, and then basically we were like, if you get it, I get it. If I get it, you get it. If you want to take this risk, let's lean in. So we did that. And I think us doing from, we never did Zoom episodes. We were in studio the whole time. Right. And that I think helped a lot. And then on top of that, Andrew started doing those, um, those pieces on YouTube, yeah. the kind of rants. <clears throat> and so that also helped a lot of people find him. Yeah. And That's how uh, everybody is invent or everybody other than some of the originals, like, uh, Corolla obviously did whatever the fuck he did, and uh, uh, WTF's been on since like right. two thousand three yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't even know, but everybody else that got super large in podcasts, uh, Ben Shapiro is another one of them. Yeah, right. Yep. He did the same thing. He just cut down his fucking uh, videos into five minute videos and put right. them on Facebook as paid advertisements. That's uh, how I grew a shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, dude, I, oh, I caught Shapiro when he was at like 1,200 followers. Mm. Um, but I just saw so many ads for it. It was like, hey, check out the show, check out the show, check out the show for, through Facebook. Mm. Finally, I clicked it on. I was like, all right, cool. And then boom, yeah. year later, he blew up. Um, it's interesting you say that about the quarantine because uh, we made the same conscious decision yeah. where we got together, like, you know, I'm a, I'm a Hollywood guy and I knew all of it, it's shut down, right? So they're not making any more yep. products or whatever. Yep. Because we got two things in quarantine. Like, I, we walked away with Last Dance and Tiger King. Tiger King, yeah. And that was about it, well, right? Tiger T King 2 is coming out soon. Yeah. <sighs> Which yeah. makes me want to I, blow my yeah, brains I out. I don't think anybody's interested. No. It's over. And they killed the, the TV show. Okay. Uh, the other one is still going on, but uh, they killed the first one with Nick Cage. Oh, and God. so that's done. But uh, uh, we had chatted about it. And we're like, look, because Dan and I had COVID day one. Like, we were the... Day one home. Oh, your OGs. Oh, yeah. Where you, where you were seeing it on the news, and it was like, hey, man, do you have the same thing? Like the same symptoms, mm. this thing on the news? And then, boom, I think four days later, everything was shut down. We told our employees the same thing. We were like, hey, uh, if you guys want to work, work. We're going to do in-studio every day. And, uh, and we made the constant decision to go every day. Yeah. Because all of our, a lot of our listeners are first responders uh, and military. And it's like, dude, they had to work throughout the whole pandemic. Yeah. But they didn't have any entertainment. <laughs> so we just went five days a week. Yeah. And then... After like a year, everybody got used to five days a week, and they were like, "Well, great, we you can't not yeah, do yeah. five days now a week." So, job. but I but we love it. So, right. I mean, we get to talk to the most fucked up people every single day. Yeah. Um, before you were here was the Sklar brothers, and uh, they're deadly. Really? Oh, dude, I've never gotten to meet them. So. Oh, you gotta have them on. Gotta have yeah. them on, especially since you're a sport. You you and Andrew are both sports fans. You guys will just talk about college football for three hours. I'm not even kidding. Really? Yeah. Fast as shit, yeah. and uh, their cadence between back and forth, because they were on a couple years ago as well. Uh, their cadence back and forth is yeah. just so dialed in that you're really? like, oh yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, we did a full hour on like, uh, kill an actor today, where really? it was, uh, you had to kill one actor. It was uh, oh, DiCaprio. That's right, that's right, that's right. DiCaprio, Denzel, uh, Denzel Washington, but their, their movies don't exist anymore. Tony Stark. Uh, his yeah. real name I barely even remember Robert Downey Jr. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Get rid of that motherfucker, dog. That's what I I love Holy Iron shit. Man. God I love damn it, Iron dude. Man, but come on, yo. 
I love Iron Man, but you're going to get rid of all the DiCaprio's movies to save Iron Man? Man, we're, so we, that'll, because that airs after this one, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to give us a spoiler alert on that one. All you motherfuckers said, RDJ. I had a different take. I, I can't say what it is, but. I'll uh, say what mine is since I'm not on that show. Yes. Robert Downey Jr. is the only one that's shown he can play multiple races. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes. And that's, hey. That is actually an underrated. That's a fucking good movie, Tropic Thunder. Yeah. Yes. All right. That puts him back in the game a little bit, but he's still got to go. He's not. He, he can't get rid of Leo, the, dude. He doesn't have the cattle. I, I'm not saying Leo. Like, I, I did not who's say Leo. Other, oh, who's so it was uh, Tom Hanks. Oh, Leo. If you say Tom Hanks, no. you can get the fuck out of your Bro, own studio. Bro, get dude, go through Hanks' catalog. He's, fuck he's, off. He's done a movie yeah, in it's... four different decades that could have won an Oscar. He and he may make it. He five has. If he has won in the 2020s. Yeah, I was gonna say. I think he has done a movie that is that has won Oscars in four yeah, different decades. I don't he's... know about the 80s. What was his first? One? Was Philadelphia? That was 91. Oh, you're right. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I was big, right on the cusp. But Oscar? big, big, big yeah. should have won the Oscar. Yeah. For, I mean, goddamn. Just for. I don't know how they did the, the trick camera work to turn him into an adult. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking assholes over here. Yeah, so we had the, and the, dude, it, we almost went an hour and a half just on that alone. Really? And, uh, oh, yeah. Those guys are great. So it, I highly recommend getting those guys on. Right, they're they're fucking sure. fantastic. Yeah, for sure. Noted. Um, where are you at now? Uh, where, where are you living these days? I'm in New York. I'm in New York. I, uh, we went to Miami for four months during quarantine, and mm -hmm. then we moved back, and I'm really trying to focus in on the, not focus in, I, for a long time, industry-wise, you know how it is, like, yep. the industry has their darlings, yeah. and I think even as diversity got hotter, I don't say things that are popular for liberal white people from minorities. I think they want to feel guilty. It's like a real self-flagellation thing they got going yeah. on, where I'm like, look, I love race jokes, but I also don't want you sitting here fucking talking. It's, I don't know. I don't like this thing. So I want to be subversive and whatever. And I never got any looks in that sense. I didn't get passed at the clubs for a long time. I didn't get weekends on the road for a long time. I didn't get an agent until like a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. Um, cause still you're not don't. like telling anti, like subversively anti white jokes. Is yeah. That... Like this thing where you just try to induce liberal white people to feel guilty. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. hate that. It's yeah. so pandering. It's so fucking annoying. And I think most of the minorities do it cause they just want to fuck white women. Uh, white women are evil to me. Who cares? Yeah, I don't want to <laughs> fuck you. So I'm just going to make my jokes. And again, I want it to be something that's not popular. You get laughs, whatever. Mm. But now, finally, I'm starting to be able to do the weekends on the road, and I'm here at this, this comedy festival mm -hmm. I just headlined last night, and I'm trying to put together a special similar to um, Andrew did a special called 441, yep. and it was like 25 minutes. I want to put out something similar in the sense that it's going to be about 25 minutes, but the idea is, you know, uh, I think I'm going to call it something like I Miss a Pooh, which is like all this shit that we're seeing. If you're black, I'm not going to tell you you can't complain. You've been through some awful shit in this country. I get it. Indians... No. Yeah. We got, we've had, we've had an easy time here and I just want us to all get together and laugh at this thing. And like, I'm trying to put together that special right now on the road. So that's what Austin is. That's why I'm in New York. I'm trying to film a bunch of hours. I'm doing the Canada and I just want to make like uh, that piece and then see where that takes me. That's awesome. Cool. That's awesome. Thank yeah. Cause I mean, you wonder like, I, you know, most people's overall goal and we've, we've met a lot of podcasts. So we're like, man, I just want that sitcom. Yeah. I want that one three camera sitcom yeah. and it's like that shit is is dying and like the chances of you doing like an Atlanta or something cool like that yeah. where everybody's like, hey, do whatever you want and here's yeah. some money are super fucking rare. Yeah. But whereas on podcasts, you can literally go on and say whatever the fuck you want all day long and 100%. I don't know how it gets better than that. Yeah, 100 percent right now, yeah. um, because otherwise you I think you'd be miserable in like a three camera sitcom where it's just like, I don't think I'd mind how easy it is. And the only re I wanted to do acting just to be a stand up. Stand up is my that's my fucking love. I love it. Yeah. That's my wife. Like I'm married to this. Yeah. Everything else was just a funnel into that. And mm -hmm. I enjoy it. And I would love to be like you said on a good TV show. A friend of mine, Rami, I love his show. Season one was like a fantastic show to uh, season of TV to me. Um, I would love to be on a show like that. Yeah. It's multi camp sitcom. If I'm in and out and I, it's an easy work week, it's four days or whatever the fuck, that sounds great, but I'm not going to enjoy the work. Right. You know right, I mean? right, right. The yeah. podcast, you enjoy what you're doing. You're talking about things you're interested in. Oh, yeah, for sure. And you're it's like Omar in season four of The Wire when he was robbing dum dums. He was like, this isn't even cool anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Great reference. Yeah. RIP, Omar. Yeah. Shouts. Shouts. Yeah. Uh, real quick here before we get to the drinking bro of the week uh, Donda or CLB? I'm not a Drake fan. I'm a Drake hater, and I don't even have a valid reason anymore. Yeah. I just hate him. Yeah. So Did you Donda. like Donda at least? Because Drake is the Beatles of fucking uh, hip hop. 
But like the, it's, he, it's I want to hold a, your hand. He's Beatles. a he's yeah. a three chord. <laughs> oh, fucking here's my generic cookie cutter bullshit. Yeah, yeah. Right, cool Nickelback. Thanks. Yeah, <laughs> he is Nickelback. Yeah, fuck out of here, man. There's a did you just call him the black? There. Yeah, I was gonna there's say the black joke Nickelback. On Nickelback that I will not do, but it's there. And oh, I'll do it. Anybody do it. If you're gonna do N-word, it, though, do it. I don't say the N word like as a as a principle. Oh, not in public. Shit. Oh, all right. Now, now I'm I'm piecing yeah, it yeah, together yeah, yeah. in my mind. It, there, I heard yeah. him in the bathroom before the show, though. It was just like <laughs> just no. screaming it. I'm like thirty seven times black, in a row. There are no black people here. Like, yeah, what the fuck, and, you, I and I knocked on the door, and you're like, I just need to get out of my fucking system, <laughs> right? Yeah. I gotta say the n word thirty seven times in a row, so I'm gonna it's fucking say it live you on air. Respect yeah. the ritual, yeah. you know? Yeah, if you do it once and then ha- then you fucking just crush. You can't ever. You can't do it. No. You gotta do it every night. <laughs> you do. Um, this is the point in the show we get to the drinking bro of the week, which is someone who's inspired you or helped you become the person you are today. Who do you want to give the drinking bro of the week to? I'm going to go Andrew. He just filmed a special. Mm-hmm. Um, and then that guy's obviously done so much for me, and we've been friends for like 13, 14 years. That's my brother. And he, again, he just filmed this special, and I'm so proud of him because, like, I watch this guy, and he's he's obsessive, and it's mostly a good thing. Sometimes when you're arguing with him, you're like, Jesus Christ, get off the fucking whatever. Yeah. But he has this Kobe-like mentality of, like, every single ounce I'm going to focus on relentlessly mm-hmm. and maximize everything I can about my career. And that's, like, an inspiring thing to watch. Mm-hmm. And whatever knowledge he's given me and, like, him being the first comic to really put all of his clips online – uh, that was inspiring. So, like, that's the guy I go with. That's my brother for right now, especially given the moment. That's the guy that pops to mind. That's Alexander. awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, besides Flagrant 2, uh, tell everybody else where they can find you. Check out my stand-up, uh, Akash Singh Comedy. It's spelled A-K-A-A-S-H, Akash. Um, I'm putting out a bunch of stuff. I'm trying to put out this special. I'm very excited about that. I, my goal in the next calendar year is three specials. I don't know if I'll do that, but that's my goal in the Ooh, next calendar That's year, ambitious. So. That's a yeah. lot of work. That's yeah. a lot yeah. of work. Well, one of them's only 25 minutes, though. Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are you like going hours like for the other two? Like it's super I don't easy. know. And that was another thing, Andrew, was like, uh, why does a special have to be an hour? And then yeah. I was like, oh. Because of HBO. Yeah, they exactly. started the comedy special with yes. George Carlin back in the day yep. in the 1970s at Stanford University. I think it was 79. And yeah, if, was the first one. If HBO calls me, they will get an hour. Yeah, <laughs> yeah for sure. But if I'm putting yeah. my own thing out, and that was another, th- I remembered hearing people even like certain Netflix shows. Uh, I was talking to the, the showrunner, one of them, and he's like, "I was like, how long is an episode?" He goes, "As long as it needs to be." I yep. saw one that was like 51 minutes. Yeah, and I was like, "That's weird," but it didn't stop me from fucking what's watching. The, it. Yeah, yeah. What's the John Oliver thing? I don't think that's always thirty. What's oh yeah, no, yeah, yeah. It's it I, bounces around. Yeah. He'll go like standard. Like <clears throat> sometimes some of them are like twenty-two minutes. Yeah. Um, which is like a well, twenty two is made network. for TV. Yeah. That's a thirty commercial. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but he's on. You know, he's permanently HBO, on HBO. Yeah. So yeah. it's like he yeah. shit. He could do whatever he wants. Just as long as it needs to be to be good, that's what it is. Yeah. Long, I don't want to put fluff in there just to stretch it out or whatever. I want tight bits and like let's let's make this a thing. So please check out my stand up flagrant two podcast. Obviously, Instagram Akash Singh. TikTok Akash Singh comedy. I'm trying to do that shit finally and yeah. start correcting people when they say his name wrong. Because that's what we do in America. We learn something and then immediately start judging people for <laughs> yeah. the shit we just learned. A cash. We appreciate you. Yeah, thanks, <laughs> thanks, man. Appreciate that. <laughs> I'm happy to be here. Oh, this was a fucking blast, dude. <laughs> Thank uh, you guys, for, for D'Anthony to D'Anthony Holloway, I'm Ross Patterson. This is Drinking Bros Podcast. Good night, everyone. God bless. Very good.